Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, two years ago, I made a video talking about how Apple were planning to move from Intel to its own silicon uh, based on the ARM architecture. And it was a pretty strong room at the time because, of course, we know that Apple is capable of making high performance, low power, low energy uh, CPUs. And now, two years later, that's exactly what Apple have announced. So I just want to dive quickly in some of the details that Apple announced last night. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so I'm actually away on a small family vacation, but I thought it was worth just taking a few minutes to stop our vacation and just to record these uh, thoughts. So what do we know? First of all, we know that Apple are moving all of its Macs over to its own processors. And of course, its own processors have CPUs in them based on the ARM uh, instruction set that Apple designed themselves. Nothing to do with Cortex, nothing to do with anything else from Qualcomm or from ARM or from anyone else. It's Apple's own design and they've been doing that since I think it was the A4 way back when and they've been building generation and generation of CPU. But of course a modern day processor is more than just a CPU. Of course you've got the GPU and there's the whole history of their GPU with imagination technologies. What the current status is. Everybody's very quiet. Is it just a cross licensing deal? Is it just a patent deal? You know, we don't know, but it's based on the heritage is from Imagination's power VR GPUs. And then, of course, besides that, you've got things like the neural engine and, of course, the memory subsystem. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes around the outside of a modern day SOC. So Apple are moving all of their Macs over to their own silicon, which means now from the smartwatch through to the iPhone, the iPad, and now all the Macs will all be running silicon built by when I say built by, I mean designed by Apple itself. Of course, it's built by because they're a fabulous com uh, company. They're built by, you know, TSMC or whoever gets the contract this year for building their actually physically building the devices. Now, a couple of interesting things. First of all, Apple have been through this before when they switched from PowerPC to Intel. So they're using the same idea again. They've got the same technology, which then was called Rosetta. Now they're calling it Rosetta 2. And basically when you install an app, it will take all that Intel code and it will convert it there and then over to ARM code, recompile it effectively, though at a binary level, not at a source code level. And then you should be getting from then that moment on the ARM equivalent. But of course it's not optimized. It just takes the code and just translates it. So there's no special optimizations going on. And they've also got the ability to run just in time stuff which means you know if you've got javascript or something that generates you know arm uh, x86 code there and then it can actually translate that on the fly so you can still run all of the apps and they also demoed running games um, and they were trying to show the performance what's interesting though is that game they specifically said it's already using apple's metal api which is apple's proprietary proprietary 3d uh, interface for how to access their GPUs. And of course, they seem to be translating that very well. What it would be like if you're using a different uh, API, Vulkan, OpenGL, we'll have to wait and see what the performance numbers are like for that. Another telling thing was they said that, of course, you just need to recompile the code to go through to be uh, have an ARM binary attached to it. But of course, they said in a couple of days, I noticed that they said it like two or three times, in a couple of days, and I thought, well, Surely if I've got a project and I just load it into Xcode and then hit the recompile button, why is it in a couple of days? So that's interesting. Is there something different that they haven't yet told us about? Or was it they were just being kind of generous to not say, you know, in five minutes, in 10 minutes, you know, it's done. Were they trying to, you know, just say, oh, in a couple of days, you'll have your app up and running on the, uh, on the new system. They've also introduced Universal 2, which basically means you get a fat binary, which you can build an application. It's got the Intel code in it and it's got the ARM code in it. And then when you install it, it doesn't matter which system you're on. It says, OK, I'll run this version. I'll run this version. And that's called Universal 2. Apple also talked a bit about virtualization, which was quite interesting. But when they talked about virtualization, they talked about Linux and Docker. Nothing, of course, to do with Windows. Of course, in the past, when they moved over to Intel, they were, of course, uh, talking about the advantages of Intel because you can run uh, you know, uh, w Windows stuff easier. Uh, in fact, there was even one time when they were claiming, you know, the MacBook was the fastest Windows uh, laptop. Obviously, that is going to kind of disappear with this shift over to the new architecture. And how long is this transition going to take? Well, this is the interesting thing. They say it's going to take up to two years and they're still working on releasing Intel Macs coming down the pipeline. So they say there's going to be new uh, app.
Apple-based silicon mats, so that's ARM-based Macs, coming before the end of the year. So I would imagine they've already shown that the development kit is a Mac Mini. So it wouldn't be hard for them to take that Mac Mini design and put the latest processor in it. And we'll talk more about that in a second. And so you get a Mac Mini based on the new Apple Silicon. And I would imagine, let's say, the MacBook Air would be a great candidate for the new uh, Apple Silicon. And then obviously you've got bigger and bigger Macs that go, you know, iMacs and Pro, iMac Pros and you've got kind of the, the big Macs and they need to be uh, also brought over to the uh, new uh, Silicon. And they said that's going to take two years. So there's going to be a gradual rollout of the different products. And that raises the interesting question, will they be abandoning AMD? Now at the moment, uh, the Macs have been using AMD Radeon graphic cards. Before that, they used NVIDIA graphics cards. But some of the Macs just use the embedded integrated GPU. So if some of the Intel ones use Intel's uh, GPU. Now, of course, the uh, silicon from Apple has got its own GPU in it. So, for example, the Mac Mini or a MacBook uh, Air could easily use the GPU built into the uh, silicon. But when you want to do one of the big high-end pro ones, what are they going to do? Are they going to still use AMD or are they going to abandon AMD and NVIDIA uh, and everybody and just go with their own GPU technology and ramp up kind of GPU, uh, desktop level GPU, sorry, desktop level GPU technology uh, to replace uh, Radeon, NVIDIA, and so on. That will be interesting to see what they do. Now, of course, the, one of the reasons they may be saying it's a two-year transition is because they're working on some real high-end desktop stuff, particularly I'm thinking about the GPU, which would take time for them to fully develop and get up and running. So maybe that's going to be the last products that get released right at the end of this release cycle. Now, of course, for a successful transition, you need also the software to go with it. And of course, Apple control Mac OS, they control their own apps like Safari and all that stuff. And they've also shown that Final Cut Pro has already been uh, developed and is working on the new base silicon and they're proud to show how fast it's running. But also uh, Apple have talked to Microsoft and to Adobe to make sure things like Office and Adobe Suite are all running on the new hardware when it first comes out. And they've demoed some of that and it all seems to be working quite well. So it looks like there's going to be this two year transition where there is going to be some Apple based silicon products, some Intel based ones. They're saying they're still working on Intel ones that they're going to release. Uh, they're in the pipeline. Of course, that does raise the question, uh, would you buy an Intel based Mac today? Maybe if you need that high power Mac that you're getting from the uh, current Intel ones, the pro versions, then maybe you'd buy one and say, well, it's another couple of years, maybe another couple of years of support after that five year maybe investment that's okay or maybe say well well i'll wait and see so it is a difficult time during transition to decide which way do you go ultimately they will all transition over to apple's new silicon now they've been demoing this stuff using an apple a12z which is the process they launched just for the ipad pro based on the a12 with greater gpu power Obviously, we've got a new iPhone coming out, so that's going to have a new processor coming out in September, October, exactly whenever that comes out. And then, of course, that will be the new generation. And then they will see, will they release simultaneously new generations of that processor aimed at laptops and at desktops and what the naming will be. We've had the, you know, like the, the A12, I said, then you had the A12X and then the A12Z. So when we move now to the A14, is it going to be the A14D for desktop or the A14L for laptop or the A14X again? Or the, it'll be interesting to see how they do the naming. But basically, we're not just going to have the A processor that you get now just in the iPhone and maybe a tweaked one to go in the iPad. Well, there are going to be a whole range of these now because they have to meet these different use cases that the Macs use right down from a laptop up to the big end ones. And again, they've said a two year transition because maybe we're not going to see the high end ones now. They are going to be 2021 or even 2022. And only now we're going to see the low end one, Mac mini, maybe a laptop. It will be interesting to see how this unfolds in Apple's plans. Now, as I mentioned, there is a developer transition kit available. It's basically a Mac mini with an Apple A12Z processor in it, 16 gigs of memory, 512 SSD. And you can get that, of course, with the new software and all the support you need from Apple to start developing apps for the new silicon. I did go online to look at getting one, but unfortunately it says the priority is given to people who've already got Mac OS 
you know, apps in the uh, app store. Of course, they're the people it's really aimed for. So I think my chances of getting one are pretty slim. So we might have to wait until Apple actually announce an actual product uh, towards the end of this year and see if we can get hold of that. And it'd be interesting to compare that, to, for example, to the Surface Pro X, which of course is also an ARM-based architecture processor in a laptop. And then of course, what Apple produces well, interesting times ahead for everybody in terms of mobile usage and desktop usage. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. My thoughts about the uh, announcement from Apple, they're moving over to their own silicon, which is based on the ARM architecture. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.